Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Wherever you are, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode um, 421. This week, uh, we meet here uh, to review the uh, answers given uh, to the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today, we have Richard Hearn. Uh, Richard, uh, um, he deals in well, uh, tier one sites, uh, uh, mainly uh, in Australia. Um, he's based in uh, Thailand and sometimes uh, in Ireland. You can find Richard on redcardinal.ie. Um, David Razam is a leading internet marketer. He is based in the sunny south of the, the UK. Um, <laughs> in West Sussex. Um, you can find David at uh, david at chameleon.com. That, 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 no, not, not that word. No. David at davidrazam.com. Okay. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. He's also a Google top contributor on the uh, um, Ad AdSense uh, community. And Masataki resides in Wimbledon um, in the uh, um, suburb of London. Um, and uh, Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he's uh, based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And uh, he's also a, a Google product expert. Uh, sorry, Mr. Tucky, I should have called you a product expert as well. Um, but uh, Tim is a Google product expert on the Google My Business community. Okay, we have uh, uh, 12 questions um, tonight. Um, let's look at the first one. And Bilal Alwan asks a question, uh, what ranking factors uh, have changed around April uh, is the title. Uh, Bilal goes on to ask, uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't know the lady, he's probably referring to Kappa. Um, I, I have a, a question. Uh, does anyone know what ranking factors have changed around April? He said, I have a, a client whose account has had a, a significant de decrease in positions. Uh, April. Uh, uh... <laughs> March. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I need to set this to. Um, April. What's this one? Oh, come on! It's meant to tell me. Um. No, no, it just says there was an update. Mm. Yeah, there was something in April. Uh, uh, you know who will tell you? Is Barry Schwartz. <clears throat> April 2021, Google Algo. <laughs> I think most so, of the updates... According to the page I'm looking at, it was the product reviews update on oh, April 2021. Yeah. An update to reward in-depth reviews over thin reviews and spammy affiliates. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. If your client is either in, a, in the affiliate vertical or, or does a lot of reviews, that may be part of it. And I think there's a blog post, isn't there, that Google released that sort of that, that covered what 
what websites should expect if they're doing reviews and, and uh, hang on yeah, yeah, yeah which might be helpful to them but i think this that that, that update and nearly all the other updates have been focused on quality so if your client has has seen a decline it's probably going to be quality related quality is the newest it's the newest yeah. uh, thing in seo isn't it really yeah um, um but there are there is another one which i use to just keep an idea on what the heck's going on uh but april 30th may 1st um april 18 it's a product product and april 3rd were tweaks <laughs> yeah but tweaks are probably updates to earlier yeah it's all the quality yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. it's all the quite it's all quality but there was the specific product review one if you wanted to put a name on it other than quality <laughs> In yep. fact, and in June, there were two spam updates, not just one, but two. And July, they also ran out of core algo and June and June and then July, they also did a core. And so far, August has been the quietest month. <laughs> it's only been <laughs> five days. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to soon get to the stage where i think people aren't just going to they're just not going to notice anything anymore nah, it'll it's become so gonna... blurred that it's just going to be impossible to discern one thing or another unless you're a huge site and you get hit drastically mm -hmm. like if you're sitting on an edge somewhere and you're going up and down then then you'll see it but i think most people just aren't going to be able to discern what's what's affected them it's very difficult to tell to be honest mm -hmm. Okay, let's move forward and let anybody of yes. Marie Sa um, has a question titled cross linking between related content. Um, and Marie goes on to say, our SEO consultant told me to link landing pages to blog posts and vice versa. Wouldn't it also make sense to link blog posts to blog posts and landing pages to landing pages? Well, if your landing pages are in a, in, in you know, some form of like, you know, <clears throat> um, hierarchy, so you've got your main content and then sub sub pages, they automatically are kind of interlinking to themselves through your navigation anyway. Um, <clears throat> and I'm assuming you've got breadcrumbs. So Google kind of knows what's going on there. If they're individual landing pages, like one is specifically boilers and the other one is radiators, they're not necessarily going to be naturally interlinked. But at the bottom of it, you can make it, you know, you can, you know, uh, you, you can interlink the two, but it's also good for the user because on the boiler thing, you know, at the end of it, it would say, depending on your heating system, you may need a new boiler system to deal with the capacity and a nice little block going view our boiler boilers and then adequately in your boilers. At the bottom of that page, you could put a nice little block going, you may want to update your radiators at the same time, and there could be a link. Yes, so that kind of makes sense. Um, but you'd like if it's the radiators and, for example, you do solar panels also, those two, you're not kind of really going to interlink the two because in that sense, they don't kind of make sense. But you would link the solar panel to check out our new ground source because that is renewables, you know, renewables. So where it makes sense, landing pages definitely. And the same thing with blogs or your articles, where it makes sense to interlink, you know, have at it. Um, 
a lot of themes also um, will also, uh, depending on what you've done, you know, will can automatically pull through the latest five related articles or your five latest articles. Those typically won't be related, but if you, you can get, you know, you can specifically refine it to actually provide related. So they'll either include, you know, included via a keyword or a tag you've used or whatever. And that, that helps interlink and, and, and helps provide the user with more of the same kind of topic or article that he was reading. But if there's something super specific that relates to that, then, then certainly. Um, as for your landing page to a blog page, it depends on what it is. So I don't know, let's say your landing page is on teeth whitening and you created an article at some point about frequently asked questions on teeth whitening. Now, ideally that could have been onto the landing page, but let's say you didn't have the capability or whatever the case may be and it is included there. Yeah, for sure. You know, you can have a thing, check out our, um, you know, FAQs on teeth whitening, then it makes sense, but you're not going to, you know, make illogical links. Thank you, Tim. I'm going to throw one thing in here. Okay. I think you've got to be sort of careful when you see questions like this. And the question I have back is define landing page because it's not quite clear what they're talking about. And who knows what, what they're talking about here. Like this could be a landing page. Like a lot of people, landing pages are for paid search. And in a lot of cases, they're not available to be crawled or, or indexed. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I'm not now. Uh, well, everything that Tim has said is absolutely valid. But the only thing is, we don't really know what they're talking about here, and that that could draw a little bit of a question as to what they should do. And um, because there could be cases where they go and do things that will actually have no impact, no benefit whatsoever. They just have a cost in terms of time and resources to do so. Um, I, I just be careful about what what exactly they define as landing pages. Yep. Thank you, Richard. All right, let's roll on down to uh, number three on our run list from Sakib Shedman, titled "Can Buying a Link Do Me More Harm?" Um, he, he goes on to ask uh, your state the uh, dumb link building question, Paul Colin. He said, I represent a tech brand, so this guy is trying to sell me a spot on his link um, with a 70% bounce rate, and the site's traffic fluctuates uh, at a constant rate. Can getting a link here do me more harm, especially with uh, July's uh, Google uh, update? So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Richard makes a good point. Look, the thing is, I don't know how you're defining how you know what his bounce rate is. But anyway, um, that's besides the point. Um, You, you, you're already asking the question because you are unsure about buying or paying for a link on this page, which should already be enough of an indication to you to like, no, I'm, I'm not paying for links. You know, it just, it's already sent alarm bells into you. You've already questioned it. Also, you know, Google releases all these things all the time. They've had, you know, their, their webmaster guidelines about link schemes out for donkey's years. They've also just released an additional, you know, that, that I'll go update to links, you know, to links and how to deal with them. Um, and you're asking the question. So, you know, in the back of your mind, you already know the answer to this is just don't do it. And you know, if people are reaching out to you trying to flog your links, nine times out of ten is because 
you are actually appearing somewhere. Your site is actually doing something. Um, uh, you know, so just ignore this crap. Just, just ignore it. Don't, don't, don't pay for dodgy ass links. Advertorials now, because you said you're a tech. I don't, I don't know. I don't know any tech sites. Like I don't know tech radar or whatever. Get hold of you and go. You know, sh you know, we we absolutely love this. Blah 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 blah. And look, you know, we'd love to do a advertorial on you. Um, of course, you know, they would be within God. So that link would be, um, you know, a, a, a sponsored link. But you know, it may be good for your exposure. There's no, you know, Google doesn't say you can't advertise and you can't link out. You just need to treat them properly. But I think you already know from your question the problem. And and you know, I think you already know in the back of your mind. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, Richard. No. Just what I said there. I mean, I don't yeah. think he's he's focusing on the wrong thing if he's worried about the bounce rate been the the the, the been the factor that's gonna negatively impact him. It doesn't matter like how does Google know what the bounce rate is? It's they're either going to count the link or they're not going to count the link or if they see a pattern in what he does if they yeah. see him it's something obvious they'll just give him a, a a manual penalty or something you know yeah um you should just have a think about like i don't know what the value of the link is but it's probably you know it's probably a, an, an amount of money that he could he could repurpose to create some content or do something oh. else yeah Okay, let's move on to Annie Thomas's question titled, I would love to pick some collective SEO brains. I have to see if I can find some, I guess. Um, Annie said that, hi, I would like to pick some collective SEO brains. My client has a blog that was not marketed at all. Uh, it has very low views and probably doesn't even get near the search engine optimization radar. The blog has some articles which are poorly written and I want to edit them uh, to be more engaging and keyword oriented. Do I A, rewrite the articles with keywords and meta details and re index them, or B, uh, delete the old articles and post the edited articles or C, uh, any other options that would be useful in boosting uh, SEO rankings. Thanks. It kind of depends. <clears throat> um, so yeah it, it, it really depends like how bad are these um i mean i often i often go through um content from client site where you compare things you can use tools or you can use for example um search console and um oh sorry Um, you can use you can use tools, third party tools. You can use Search Console, and basically you start looking at queries where you're appearing. Then you look at which piece of content that query is relating to, and then you look at that query and you look at the content, and you you then say, okay, I can update this content to include these you know these these, these queries um these answers answer that so it really does depend on the article um do the article you know how overlapping are they can you combine them so it really i mean you know without looking at anything like this it, it's just uh, yeah you know you really need to look at the article what is it or what could it be doing and if it's real trash just delete it 
and then rework it and then add the new bits to content to it, um, update it, you know, the images, the, whatever the case may be, just update the whole thing. So remove the old rubbish and then go in with a new one. If something is actually doing okay, but it's not, uh, but it needs refining and, 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 and a sort of kind of a proper structure, then keep that one, just refine it uh, and, and update it. Um, and you often find that a few refinements and tweaks to something can actually do, do, can, can do very well. Um, yeah. So it really does depend on what, what the whole mishmash is doing. If they're bad though, you know, like if they're bad, like she says, if like she says poorly written, it's hard to yeah. know what that means, but it, it doesn't get much views. Like you can only put so much lipstick on a pig, you know what I mean? It's it's <laughs> yeah. it's like the idea of rewriting the articles with keywords and meta details. And um, like if it's shit to begin with, throwing the right keywords at it just means it's still gonna be shit with the right keywords. So, you know, it, it does depend. You're dead right, Tim. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, probably they want to just go back and see, well, well, what needs to be written, what content would work better. And it could be just sometimes like trying to rework something old is a lot more costly in terms of time and effort than actually just writing something from you. What does David think? David is the content guy. Come on, yes. For some reason, we'll give him a he's not the he's not the tech guy you can turn on his microphone though. <laughs> no, 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 um, no. I have trouble with that on my phone as well. You know, and just just like those old ones of the dial, they're they're really nice. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm fully in with if it is crap, uh, and I think we can probably surmise that it is crap given what you said um then um yeah don't polish a turd um do do it properly do the job properly rather than try and uh try and put go faster stripes on it excellent thank you richard thank you david all right let's roll on uh we're ripping through these um up to number five on our own list. Uh, Matus uh, Rokosuski um, asked the question, it's titled, it's still showing even with no index. Uh, he explains, hi guys, uh, can anybody explain to me why my product pages and others still show in Google uh, even after I have added no index to all of them. I have uploaded a sitemap to Google Search Console and it seems to be all okay there, but still, um, whenever uh, I put my website domain into Google, those other links show up. It's been a week since I did it by now and last uh, read of my sitemap in Search Console shows as of today. Um, he said, oh, appreciate any help i can get from you i i imagine that google is doing its usual slow thing um a week is nothing in uh, in search engine land i would say um and the other uh, the other thing is have you blocked it in uh, robots txt as well um so I would wait. I think Google will gradually get round to it, um, but I would also look at uh, robots.txt and see um, if you've blocked it there as well, or if it's been blocked there as well. Um, I take um, it that it probably hasn't been. Sorry, can I interrupt? Not as well. Um, the, the issue is that if, if, if um, robots text is blocking, um, yeah, Googlebot, Googlebot respects that that robot's text and and w won't crawl the page, but then he won't discover um, the no index. 
In, in fairness to Brenda Malone, she was very uh, cute, and she she asked that question, and he gave the domain, and he's not blocking anything. It's a it's a WordPress site with a default WordPress robots.txt, so uh, it rules that out. But it looks like he set it up in a way that he has he has duplicated his content in various ways because in in a few of the later questions are the, or or responses he says that he only expects to have three or four pages but brandon malone says there's about 30 indexed and it looks like a lot of duplication based on whatever he's done in wordpress so it's it's it could also be that if there's duplicate pages and google has found these duplicate pages they're very unlikely to crawl them frequently like when they see all these dupes what he can do is he can go into Google Search Console and he can actually do, he can he can query the page URL, each page URL individually and see what they say. And he might be able to just get them to resubmit them. He can submit up to something like 10 URLs a day to get them real-time indexed and that would get them to see the no index. Excellent. Does he need to worry though? That's the question, really. Does he need to bother with this? It's funny how people can chase their tail chasing things that aren't that important in the grander scheme of things. And yeah. it's yeah, probably not going to make a lot of difference to him getting these, this stuff out. That's my best guess. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, roll on to number six on our run list. Uh, before I do, um, let, let me thank people like Brenda Malone uh, um, on this question and, and uh, many others. Brenda uh, um, will give an answer on the spot um, uh, through the week and making uh, WSEO questions such a valuable resource. And, and uh, Brenda's contribution and those of others uh, like Richard Hearn etc etc uh, um michael martinez um those people we, we thank you so much all right uh, let's roll on this one for is uh tyler priest uh, asked the question i'm trying to rank my business and not seeing results yet i i understand how he feels um anyway tyler said hey all i'm trying to rank my business not seeing results yet i think i just don't know what the next step is my competitors have almost zero backlinks and under 30 citations i have many backlinks and use majestic uh, brackets i'm not sure if that's what you uh, pros use um but i have a trust score of uh, 27 and citation flow of 28. I, I paid a guy to do 50 citations and just got the, the sheet today and they're all up. I have two reviews. I'm still not ranking. Um, what's next? So the thing is, Tyler, <laughs> so, you know, we're dealing with a local business and like my first question, so you, you already realised that it's not necessarily about links, you know, especially when it comes to local. And if you do have links, they should pretty much be localized. So I don't know where you're getting all these additional, these other links from. Um, <clears throat> they could actually be hindering you than helping you. As for your 50 citations, citations, more is not always better um but if they're in there and they've got your name your address that, that that's fine but the point is you know you know literally there are a couple of um yeah the state is the most i don't know where you're based um date you know data or data aggregators out there which you kind of submit to and just just forget about it like um, you could go over and refine them, just make sure they've got your images in and proper URLs and just double check them or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's not like, you know, your main thing for a local business is on page or on site um, and your Google My Business. So your GMB, <clears throat> make sure it's set up correctly. 
the correct category is displayed. You filled in your product section, your service section, your business description. Um, you know, uh, use posts uh, to highlight different products, services, special offers that you've got going on that week, that month. Um, <clears throat> make sure that's talking to your to your um, to your site. You know, your site should be optimized for your location and your main business. If you've got services within that, those services should be um, ideally optimized for your local location and the or, and all the areas you serve. So um, you've got the citations, you've got those other links, which that's quite a lot for a local business. Um, now is a question of making sure that your GMB is done and you're on, you, you know, it's kind of your on-site is, is, is working for you. Well, thank you, Tim. Right. Okay. Let's go to number seven on our run list. Uh, it's from Danny Goodwin, who is the um, editor of um, Search Engine Journal, I think. Um, anyway, um, it's titled, Would This Be Considered Contextual Search Optimization? Um, it's a, a, Danny said, it's a bit of an odd question for you. Um, let's say I'm trying to rank content for a query that's basically an analogy. A is to B as C is to D, but the user doesn't know what C is in this scenario. Already I have a headache. Um, but C is covered in my content and uh, should be considered relevant enough by Google uh, to uh, rank for this term as the definitive answer. Would this be considered contextual search optimization or does this have another name um, slash term or is this not technically contextual search as we define it uh, because that's more based on the user history location etc versus the query in this scenario thanks for any thoughts well. Nobody wants to touch this one? Well, <laughs> um, leaving aside the contextual thing, um, if it's an analogy, but it's parallel, uh, then I don't think Google will necessarily make the association. You know, um, <sighs> Because you have two sets of things going on. A is to B, okay, that's fine. C is to D, but these are two separate things. Unless there is a connection between A and C and B and D in which they're connected, then it's a parallel thing. They're two separate things. You know, I don't think Google would necessarily make that association because it's just because it's an analogy because it's two separate things, two separate relations independent of each other. Yeah, like what, what would be the relationship between the, the word garlic and the word what? Like how would Google know that when they typed what, that what they were interested in was garlic? And maybe it's just the example doesn't make as much sense, but like, I can't see how Google would be able to determine the intent there. Maybe I'm sure that maybe they have some black magic that they could do with what it's a very odd question. And it's very hard to conceptualize exactly what it is. And even the example, I'm not sure that that added a whole lot to the conversation. I don't know what the comment I, I did. I did look at this and I just thought, Who's going to understand what this is about? Yeah, and I'm not so sure what the ultimate goal 
ultimate goal of this is because you know why don't you just mention c you know if you're going to establish an analogy you, you know, then you have two separate parallels that you assume are the same sort of similar things that can be compared I but that, i don't think that's what i think it's more that the searcher doesn't know what the term is <sighs> yeah but then like then you'd expect them to use a synonym or something like that yeah or something that is related in some way although i know myself i've done it like i can't i can't think of a phrase and i try to type in a search term to figure it out and that often doesn't go very well but it's not really clear like certainly garlic and what wouldn't be synonyms they may have some relatedness to you know the 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 term d but but we we it's not clear from the example i don't know it's 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 a very odd odd query yeah i mean if someone doesn't know what c is and wants to get to c and knows what d is then that's fine you know people type in d but they're not going to type in an analogy of a is to b to get but to I, c i i'm thinking that there, there's a there's a there's a way that people would or, or a context that people would make this search suppose they were in a pub quiz and they were uh, and they were cheating um <laughs> <laughs> they could quite easily put uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever it is, is to something and is what is to the other thing. Um, you know, looking for the answer for garlic or whatever it was. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of pub quiz, general knowledge type question, isn't it? You know, I, I know that when I, I do a lot of, uh, when I do uh, key phrase research for, for clients, I end up with loads of uh, of queries that are clearly from students uh, looking for answers to uh, to, to, to uh, questions they've been given, you know, for for um, for homework or, or for, for essays or whatever. And I think that's that's what this this is about. Okay, sure. So, okay, so the question would be: If meat is to vegans, then what is you know, to yeah, vampires yeah. And, and you've got to su supply the answer to what yeah but then other than sort of pub quizzes and cryptic crossword clues i'm not 100 sure how that's going to be particularly helpful i mean let's say that you know someone's have someone has it in in their heads that you know okay vampires what don't they like and they can't remember garlic right so ultimate goal for them is to find garlic because that's what vampires don't like mm. is you know what they want to avoid what vampires want to avoid so they look so if that's the case then people aren't going to say okay right i have to find that out um yeah okay let's type in an analogy i just didn't mm. see that happening I, I don't think they would do no i don't think so don't what think. don't vampires like you know that that would be the query and the answer would be garlic but that's a different query, isn't it? That's, that's yeah. not the one that, that Danny is starting with here. No, but I, I, I just can't see, other than sort of the pub quiz and crossword uh, clues, I'm not mm. so sure. And in that sort of stilted formulation of if this is, and then you give an analogy in the first place, and then provide a hypothetical, I just don't see what real life circumstance that people would be looking for that. You clearly don't go go to pubs for pub quizzes. <laughs> no, <laughs> and the only way I, I you know see the if if there's a connection between um, B and D or A and C, so it's not just that they are analogy, but they are interrelated somehow. Then I I sort of see the point because you have four entities that are in a sense linked to each other. Then that that sort of makes sense. So you, you know three bits. And you just go to the fourth bit. That makes sense. But it, if you're talking about analogy, it's parallel to each other. I, I, th I think we're we're kind of we're kind of doing perhaps what we what we tell 
um, many of our questioners uh, not to do, which is to overanalyze. I think we're yeah. disappearing up <laughs> our search engine optimization rear end here. <laughs> Yeah, but it is it is interesting, isn't it? You know, I just want to know what circumstances that that this query query arises. I mean, it, it is interesting. I must admit, uh, I. I uh, in a few weeks, I'll be 70, and um, the, the, the brain slows down uh, with each passing day. Um, I just had to pinch myself to think I'm, I'm, I'm actually here talking to you about this stuff uh, at such a high level. And uh, I commend all of you guys for uh, knowing what you're talking about, because I certainly don't. Anyway. <laughs> Um, well, I had no clue. <laughs> ah, no, that's attacking you. you. You're deep. You are deep. Okay, now let us go to number eight on our run list, and we thank Danny Goodwin for his question. Maybe he wants to write an article on WCA questions on Search Engine Journal. He should. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, Josh Sheldon uh, said, I'm having trouble getting a specific page indexed by Google. He said, hi, everyone. I'm happy to get some advice. I'm having trouble getting a specific page indexed by Google. The page in question was previously getting blocked by robots text for some reason, um, which was um, uh, rectified. And I then requested index in Google Search Console. This was approximately two weeks ago. Google has crawled the site multiple times since then, most recently today, but isn't crawling the page that's missing from the index with the last crawl occurring on the 30th of May, 2021. The pages in the site map, the main navigation menu is and is linked directly to, um, I missed that. Uh, let me just go back a bit. There we are. It seems to me that uh, Google is purposely avoiding crawling this page or even, attempt, even attempting to. Uh, is there something I'm missing? Um, or does anyone have any strategies to get around this? Uh, any help is much appreciated. And he said, thanks. OK, Josh. Um, look, can I, can I um, jump in and answer this one? Dying to. Um, Googlebot uh, doesn't crawl in, in real time. Uh, Googlebot just crawls one link at a time and, and gets the results and, and, and stores it. Um, and later on, all of these uh, um, results are put together and collated and uh, this is the issue that you're facing, Josh. Uh, it, it, it was blocked by robots text. And so there in, in one part of uh, Google's memory uh, is, is, is this reference. Uh, and uh, um, it, it's still, my, 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 it might have crawled the page, but uh, not doesn't necessarily have that uh, um, block from robots text um take taken away well that's my 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 thing on it uh, do you guys um have more for that no okay i know you need to jump in just quickly before you can move on the one thing i would make sure they should make absolutely sure that the robots.txt isn't somewhere been cached or not updated or some version of it might exist or floating in and out or whatever it might be, because that can often be the case with those things as well. Sorry. No problem. All right. Uh, number nine on our run list, does Google 
Google crawl web pages with query strings. My word, it does. Travis Pereira said that um, does Google crawl web pages with query strings instead of permalinks? The old website did not have a permalink structure. All URLs uh, looked similar to abc.com slash. Uh, yeah, you can see so you can read this um, query on um, uh, the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. Um, I'm not going to try and make uh, describe it. Um, did Google even uh, crawl these pages? Do I need to set up redirects to the new URLs with permalinks? Thanks. I so see Richard Hearn uh, answered this uh, quite directly. He said, uh, or do you want to say it, uh, Richard? No. Uh, he, Richard said that you, yes, you should set up redirects if you are, actually Richard would say, if Earl's uh, for your content changed. Okay. Let's rock on down to... Michael Martinez uh, asked the question, um, would this be deemed to be duplicate content by Google? A new client of mine uh, is, is an author um, and I'm, I'm just working uh, as an online marketing consultant for him, uh, not as an SEO search engine optimization specialist. He has a website and sends out by monthly emails. Uh, the content is usually an essay. Um, and he has a good size database. He has a selection of email content uh, on his website. Um, but his um, ESP, ESP, what's the ESP mean? Um, email service provider. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, his ESP generates uh, email service provider generates a web copy of the email and that seems to be also hosted on my client's site uh, albeit with a different Earl um, would that be uh, deemed to be duplicate content by Google uh, should I ask him to change uh, uh, the format of his email so that it does not contain the whole essay? Or shall I tell him to stop putting his email content up in his blog? Uh, thank you in advance for your thoughts. I think this needs a little bit of a correction. The, the, the person who asked this was not, in fact, Michael Martinez. It was, I think, the person who replied to Mar Michael Martinez's comment here. Just in case it looks like it was from Michael, because it wasn't. Uh, right, right. I'm not sure what happened, but that that it, it it definitely wasn't, unless he's answering his own question, which would be. Yeah, look, look the 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 um, issue is we're we're having trouble with our our, our scraper. Uh, um, each each week we we get um, our questions and, and bring them down, and um, Facebook is. Uh, either doing it deliberately or just happened uh, to be doing it by accident. But um, Facebook is making our life very hard at the moment. And um, I suppose it's one of the discourages from reading our own content. Anyway. <clears throat> ah, now that, that makes a lot more sense because I wondered why Michael would be saying that... Um, and I, I, I purposely don't, don't uh, look ahead on our, our run list. Um, it, it keeps me alive just trying to figure out what's going on. All right. Um, so. Um, the, the thing with this, like Michael says, it's not duplicate content. I mean, like if it's never been published and they're only sending it out in an email, well, how can it ever be duplicate content because Google never sees it? So 
even though it's it's created on their website, we don't we don't know for sure that Google can crawl that or that they can index that. So, like, uh, it's a curious one. Like Michael Michael's point, he said like it's a business decision, and he's quite correct. It really is. The really SEO doesn't really come into it. Um, but I sort of countered and I said, well, like if someone's going to the trouble of creating this content for an email drop. It seems a bit daft not to release it at some stage or not to use it at some stage on their website to try and generate organic traffic from it. And my, my reply was just really like, do they do they charge for this email? Because obviously if they charge for it, they can't give it away for free. Or maybe they could give it away for free at a later point. Um, but like if you've got really good content, I just like there's some great stuff that goes out by email. It doesn't really make much sense to me to not utilize it for organic search as well again assuming that it's free and it's not paid for like as long as he doesn't cannibalize a revenue stream by by putting it on his site if it was me i'd probably be saying yeah like if it's great content why not why not publish it thank you richard all right, then that was number 10 on our own list. Let's find number 11. Uh, Neil Cheeseman uh, wants to know, delete the URL or leave it. Uh, advice, please, uh, Neil said. Uh, a theatre website where the content is news, reviews and shows that sell tickets. Um, there are about 1,500 shows that are added as products using WooCommerce. These are regional shows across the UK, and they uh, generally uh, they are generally of a very short run, sometimes for a day and often for a few days a week, but are listed on sale months in advance. All works fine, but what to do when a, a show's date uh, is passed? Delete the URL or leave it? Uh, up until pre COVID, I was leaving the show URLs in the hope that they might attract some residual traffic, i.e. someone might think uh, the show was there, and likewise, maybe some people might have added a backlink, but not displaying the show on the category page brackets, uh, which is the venue on which there are 20 plus. Due to a restructuring of the data feed, the shows are currently set to delete once the performance date is passed. So um, should I continue to delete the URLs as they pass or keep them and remove them from the venue page so that they don't display there? Um, an example of one of the venues uh, is as follows. And you, we've run out of space, I think, on our, on our scrape um and uh, but you can see that the, the rest of this question on the uh, dumb seo questions facebook group okay i tell you what the, the dumb seo questions um I love I love seeing the interaction here. This was a really interesting one, I think. It's not your everyday sort of topic, not your everyday sort of website either. You know, it's it's live events. I think is what it is, like theater events. Very interesting. <clears throat> I think I think that. Has he worked on this site, or is it his site, his own site? I think it works on it. He's been on it for a long time, I think. Long time, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's asked like, like it. It looks genuinely interesting, but like there's challenges with this stuff as well because it's so, yeah. uh, you know, it's transitory. You know, it, it doesn't. It's not like you have a product that you sell all the time. It's it's sold up to its airing mm. date, and then it then it, it yeah. probably cancelled. You know. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not like cats, which hangs about and never goes away. But there's lots of data. Like, that's the one thing that I love about this sort of idea. 
like you think like now i don't know what sort of data they they store but you think like a show you've got actors you've got producers you've got different runs of the show you've got the show in different theaters like there's so much linkage potential depending on what data is available like i'd say it's a fascinating one to to work with I, like I'd say, there's just oodles of potential to to build stuff out, some interesting stuff out, if you can, with this. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, and the thing is, I don't know. The other the other thing is is, will do they? sell only tickets for particular theaters so like when a production moves on to another theater do they sell the tickets for that particular theater or that that's what i mean like like if it's moved on it's it's gone like i think that's what neil's trying to say yeah it's gone so how do we yeah Hmm. then you sort of maybe you want to try and rank the production yeah so yeah. That the production is ranking regardless of what theater it's in or so that the page will come up so you'll you know it'll be the, the page for the production and you'll be selling the latest theater yeah, yeah. you know like there, there, there are ways like i mean the mind sort of boggles with this you could like just come up with so many different ways to link this data it it it, it really does depend on what what happens with some of these things, you know, what are these shows, could they ever go back to a theater again in the future? Cause then you end up with redirect soup. Yeah. Yeah, um, totally. Totally. But so much data here, like it'd be just wonderful to have a huge database with all this stuff. If it's structured data, like the stuff you could do with this, it could get really interesting. And then you start yeah, mixing in schema. Yeah, so like you could have a thing for like, I don't know, just call it Grease the Musical. So now it's been sold out in XYZ Theatre. That's no longer coming back, but you could still have Grease the Musical there um, and then turn it more into an informational page. You know, and you know, you already would have it on there who are the actors, who's the cast, the production. You could actually kind of do like a Netflixy thing where people could click on that particular actor see where he's actually performing next in what cast and if they track in a particular thing so yeah so greece is no longer on but you click on danny over there and then danny is actually now in i don't know abba the musical at this theater and you could create a whole the, it goes on and on you could have greece uh, greece the musical but there could be multiple different productions of greece the musical mm -hmm. at yeah. different points in time in different theaters like there's you got a rabbit hole on this like <laughs> yeah, it, 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 to me it, it, i love i love sort of sort of any sort of automated structure where you're, you're you can automate content based on structured data and um, i don't know that he has all that sort of thing but like to me it just sounds like there's potential here the only downside is that like he's probably going to be competing with you know the imdb or whatever it is for theater like there's probably something similar for theater um but still i mean you can still when you've got local data it just sounds very interesting and google loves this sort of stuff with actors and and and, and people and productions and movies like that's why they have schema for these particular for these particular things you know that 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 they do use so um yeah we I, i'm sure we've given absolutely no answer to delete the earl or leave it nothing relevant to delete the earl or leave it but it, it is a fascinating topic yep all right let's um call that um a response for uh, neil um yeah i've got i've got one last thing sorry i keep on doing it. i keep on jumping in just one thought yeah 
just when I was thinking about delete or leave it, okay? Um, I often think, like, unless you've got problems with crawl budget and crawl allocation, etc., I, I just wouldn't delete stuff. Or unless it's really bad quality, I'd keep it. Keep as much as you can. When you start running into problems with crawl budget or or quality issues or, or architecture issues, then maybe cut it. But, like, you're probably up at, like, pretty large sites before you run into that sort of thing. You're talking about like hundreds of thousands of barrels. Um, but I always think like, you know, what's the cost of keeping it? Like, even if it only gets a couple of views a year, it could be worth it, you know? So again, that's a very general answer to that question, but yeah, like and if you have no cross, problem with crawl budget, I, I keep it. Yeah, you can cross sell, you know? <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, David. And thank you, Messer. I'm sure you must have been in there somewhere, Messer, were you? No? Okay. Nope. <laughs> Let's go to um, the next. It's uh, number 12 on our run list. It's titled, When I cannot use some keywords. The question is, am I, I am working with a client, which is always a good thing, and I have uh, the following challenge. They want to rank for the keyword personal loan in Jeddah. And, uh, but due to brand uh, guidelines, they cannot use the word loan uh, in their on-page uh, SEO, including URLs. Is there a strategy which will help them to at least appear on, on page one for um, personal loans in Jetta, the, the personal loan in Jetta keyword? We can use loan, the, the loan word, in off-page. I see a great contribution there from Emin Johns. Um, should have mentioned Emin before. Yeah, I've never really worked in that space. So. You know, I, I mean, I commented on this also, and like, this is like, this is pretty competitive stuff when you're into this sort of, into the financial services and loans. And my comment was pretty simple. Like, if they want to rank for this, they really should want to, they should have it on the page. Um, like, you're, you're just sort of biting your nose to spite your face to say like, oh, we can't have the word loans on the page for branding reasons. Well, like, what do you think people are looking for? Do you think people are looking for a bank that doesn't talk about loans? You know, it's, 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 it's a tricky one. I understand like branding guidelines. Um, like I could tell you some of the funny ones. I, well, I wish I could tell you some of the funny ones I've had to do over the years, but, um, you know, I think really go back to the client and explain to them that like, okay, we can try and work on this, but set the, set expectations to tell them if we can't put the word loans on the page and we're trying to rank for the term personal loans, well, chances are we're not going to get very good outcomes. So at least let them know ahead of time what's going to happen with this and make sure that you're sort of covered because you don't want them coming back after six months, nine months and saying to you, you know, we're not even on page one for personal loans. Um, you need to at least cover yourself and set the expectations with them so they understand why it's not, it's unlikely to work out. Yeah, I suspect yeah. in this case, it's because of religious reasons. I assume that it's, you know, Jed has mentioned. So um, it is personal loans or loan credit, these kind of things, anything that accrues interest, I think is considered haram in Islam. And I think that might be the problem. That's why 
they can't use the word loan. And assume that it is that it's, uh, they're trying to rank in English, not in Arabic. Um, and that's why um, they're trying to sort of <laughs> have the word loan or off site so that they don't touch that word. So it it is, I think, going to be very difficult because if there are people looking for loan, um, interest bearing loans in Jeddah in English, oh, pages that cater for that particular search will appear. And I don't think you could really compete. So, but if they search, they would. So, if they searching, they would be literally searching for a haram based loan. So, why don't they use that on page? Because that's not. No, I don't. I doubt that's. I doubt that's what they're look. I, I. I. I imagine if they're trying to rank in English, they're trying to target people who are searching in English. Which probably aren't locals. To non, okay. Yeah, so they're probably not like the the the, the religious reference probably doesn't impact the people they're uh, searching for this okay. term. Whereas yeah. the bank itself is is restrained somewhat by the religious the religious side of it. Hmm. Um. Yeah, it's a tricky one. I don't. I don't. I mean, yeah. Could you use anger text from third parties? Would it still work? Eh, it probably would, actually. You know, if you use some sort of synonym on the page and you didn't use the word loan, but you'd use some synonym which was relatively close, and then tried to get anchor text into the page with personal loans in it, but we're we're getting down the spam track at that point, I think. And of course, the, the, the client may not be happy with having anchor text, which uses the term loan, even though it's not appearing on their website. The fact that it's linked to them with this may, may be problematic also. It's a, yeah, it's certainly an interesting take, uh, Masataki. Well done on noting that, that side of it. Yeah, I think the conclusion is it's very difficult um, because if you have con competitors who are prepared to use the word, then, you know, they're going to, they're going to appear. I don't think we can. Okay. So, here, so here's another thing. It's only like, like I've just had a quick little Google here. Essentially it's the interest on the loan, right? Which is the problem. It's, it's not a loan. Itself. It's the issue. It's the interest on the loan. So essentially, being compliant, you could have loans, and then, then oh fuck no, because no, because on that it, one, you would if it's a commercial loan, show you it would show you typical interest rate, which would be zero, yeah, and then it would become yeah, but but then you actually, actually right. they want to try. So yeah, I don't know. How. Yeah, no, I think I think personal loans in this means um, unsecured personal loans. So um, you don't have collateral as such. Um, so I think that's I think that's the reason why it's problematic because you, you know, if there is a collateral or if there is some sort of property, then I think it's a different matter. Um, um, it's it is I think the way I understood the question. I may be wrong, but is that it is personal loan in this context means unsecured personal loan um, and pretty um, bearing pretty high interest. That, that would be my guess. Okay. Any more for this? Another very interesting uh, topic though. Not your everyday uh, problem. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. So when I click this link, uh, I think we'll see the answer. Yes, it's thank you for watching time. We have answered uh, yet again for another week. We've answered all of the questions asked or reviewed and uh, the, those questions, re reviewed the answers to those questions. That's more like it. We'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, until then, I, I must thank um, Richard Hearn, David Razam, Tim Kepper, Masataki Wasa, um, for your um, valuable um, input. Um, yeah, I, I, I think la I thought last week was probably our best ever. Now I think this week is our best ever. Anyway, we'll see. Um, okay. Um, did I forget to mention um, people like Ammon Johns um, answering questions as they happen? Um, Michael Martinez, Brendan Malone, um, and you know, the, the, the people that do uh, answer uh, questions as soon as they appear. All right, um, let me find the right button to click. <laughs>